The following interview was conducted with Lee F. Schrader, Professor Emeritus of Agricultural Economics for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on Tuesday, April 6, 2010 in Stewart Center. The interviewer is Catherine Marquis, the Oral History Librarian. Welcome. Good afternoon, Dr. Schrader. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Glad to be here. Thank you. Okay, tell us a little bit about where you were born and your parents and early years. Well, I was born in southern Illinois, a little town called Okawville, about 40 miles from St. Louis, uh, and uh, grew up on the farm there. Um, I guess uh, I would have finished high school in 51, okay. and uh, I had planned to, to continue to stay on the farm, uh, but 1951, you'll recall, there was a war going on, and there wasn't much point in starting a farm if I was going to be drafted shortly, so I took off to the University of Illinois and then just kept going. <laughs> well, let's back up. Tell us about high school, and then did, you didn't have to go into the service at all? Uh, I went to, uh, uh, to the university and uh, was in the ROTC oh, program okay. and, and had a commission. Uh, so that by the time I went on active duty, Korea was done, and I had a <laughs> and I had a commission. <laughs> well, tell, at high school, were there any student clubs? Was how large was your class in high school? And then you talk a little bit about college too. Well, we were uh, we were quite a small high school. I was trying to think of how many students uh, there were at that time. Uh, I'm thinking maybe it was about 118 for the for the whole school. So it was small uh, class, a small town, small right. small high school. And uh, uh, my primary interest was in agriculture. So what kind I of farm was, did your family have? Oh, just a just a general farm. Okay. Did they have animals or? Uh, we farm? we had dairy okay. cattle and. Uh, Hogs and uh, then just a corn. variety of crops, corn. mainly corn, soybeans, and wheat down okay. there. Sounds good. Um, and I, uh, as I say, I my finished high school in '51. I think I've got the. Were right you an date. FFA while you were in high school? Oh yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All, I was in vocational agriculture all four sure. years. Uh, through high school and it was because of my vocational ag instructor that I wound up going to the university uh, in fact he uh, he came to the farm and said you know you will fill out a scholarship application for the University of Illinois I said why you know I'm not going just you just fill it out. <laughs> so, Sign your name, right? So I wound up getting a scholarship, and uh, okay. then when it was time for school to start, here's my VOAG instructor says we're going to Champaign. <laughs> never, you know, never would have done any of that without the encouragement and insistence of uh, my. VOAG instructor in high school uh, because neither my parents were just grade school was as far as they went. There wasn't a high school at the time the, sure. that they were in school. And so it was just this this one insistent Who took an teacher interest and realized that you who, had the capabilities uh, to do it. Yeah. But can you imagine uh, he, he came out when it, you know, as I say, he had me take the scholarship exam, got the scholarship, made me fill out an application, and then uh, came to get me and my stuff and brought me to the University of Illinois. Wow. Uh, That's your great uncle almost. <laughs> and, <laughs> in fact, also had, uh, he knew a place that he'd had people stay. Had he had gone there, I gather? No, old, no, old. no. He was he was an old timer from the University of Missouri. Oh, okay. Uh, but uh, he knew the place where he got me a room, and also took me to a place where I got a job that I 
stayed in that same same house and same job for four years at the University of Illinois. What kind of job did you get? Oh, I was at, worked in the film library. Oh, good. Okay. Oh, 16 millimeter things or whatever. Right. Uh, yeah. Like what they used to have here. Yeah, we yeah it was it was mailing out uh, sure. to the schools sure. who rented the, the films uh, and so it you know, turned out to be a, a again a good experience yeah. any other when clubs were you in what was campus life life like for you oh just agricultural economics club was about the uh, about the only thing that I, I spent probably close to 40 hours a week working so I didn't uh, I didn't even think about social life until I was a senior uh, it's okay did you have your meals there at the house did, no so many, oh so no. you had to eat off campus no I ate, it was uh, just a room just a room okay like they used to have a lot of those around in the house around the facility here I understand for people that took advantage yeah. of it yeah in fact there was <laughs> there was one uh, there was one restaurant that I could get breakfast uh, for 26 cents. That included the, the coffee, uh, <laughs> and so that was that was kind of my favorite <laughs> favorite restaurant. And in those earlier years, because I, uh, I didn't really have any money other yeah. than what, what I were earned. The, what uh, were the fees like? See, sometimes I inter I've interviewed people. Well, I had a scholarship okay. that so. paid tuition, so the and fees you were in state student too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the fees would be. Oh, I don't think it was. It was really a nominal amount, sure. like it was time. in those days. Yeah, right. maybe twenty-five or fifty dollars a semester. I can't remember exactly what it was. Well, researchers put it in that context because other people like yours have quoted and they say, oh, really, they say what it was. And I said, well, they'll understand, <laughs> <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> and with the scholarship, of course, I paid no, uh, just the, the, the minimum amount sure, to, right. uh, to the end. What did you do during the summer? Did Worked at home on the farm. Oh, did you? Oh, that was nice. That worked out for you. Did your parents come and visit you while you were there? After you got there, at least? I think my mother was on the campus once, and then I, I think they came, I think I took them up for graduation. That was, but that was the extent of, uh, of that. No, my dad had just finished grade school, and, uh, and my he mother- he was busy with had, what he had to do on the farm. So that was uh, right. education wasn't uh, wasn't a big sure. thing. Did you have any brothers or sisters? No. Oh, you're only child. Okay. Uh, so after commencement, then what came next? Uh, oh, I spent a, uh, the summer after graduation. Uh, I had orders to to go in the military in September, I guess, or October, probably mm -hmm. October, and went home and there really wasn't all that much to do. Uh, so I went over to St. Louis to visit a friend of mine uh, and wound up taking a job at the, at the firm that he was working at. Uh, so I then had a job for the rest of the, of the time until I went in the Army. Then what happened when you got into service? You said the war was just about come, come winding down for the thirty-eight. Yeah, oh, the the, uh, the Korean War was just winding down at, at that point. Uh, well, that was just a, a, another uh, bit of luck. Uh, I wound up with an assignment in Washington as uh, uh, in the unit that was that it was in Signal Corps. And the unit that I was involved was in was in charge of providing communications for emergency relocation of national government. So my military activity, I didn't wear a uniform, uh, and was just working with, uh, with between the telephone company and 
the various agencies who, you know, at that time, and I, I guess there's probably something like that still going, each agency had a place to go in case of war. Uh, and so the unit that I was in was providing communications for this emergency relocation of government which of course meant I had almost nothing to do with the military. Uh, I was just in a basically a civilian job for my two years of active duty, which didn't hurt my feelings at all. And being in Washington was... Uh, was Did they provide uh, housing for you too? No. Oh, oh you yeah. oh. Hmm. No, so we, I it? lived in an apartment. Oh, uh, okay. Even though you were in the service, you were attached to the service. Right. Okay. But they didn't, there, there were no, no housing at all available in Washington. So you just had to go out and find something. Not too big. Crisis, no more availability then, I'm sure. Right. I was in Arlington, uh, actually right across uh, old... U.S. 52 from uh, Fort Myer. Fort Myer? That doesn't sound right. That's right, though, I think. No, no, that isn't, that isn't right. Gosh, here yeah. I am. Were you across from your, the our cemetery? Our yeah, well, that, whatever, the, whatever the, the military organization is that is at that location. Who takes care of and it. I, I don't know if it's my, I forget. Meyer uh, sounds. It sounds like it. Sounds the ones right. that they also take care of what uh, the changing of the you know oh, the yeah, cemetery. Oh yeah, That's and all, the, that. all the ceremonial sure, stuff. Right, right. Uh, we were just assigned there because they had to assign us somewhere. Sure. And so. <laughs> <laughs> we have vacancy. So I had had really nothing to do with Fort Meyer <laughs> other than that's where my records were, and uh, if that's I where was, I got. Did my laundry? There were words to that effect. <laughs> so it was a, a, a not at all a typical military experience. Hard, hardcore experience, right? Uh, it was uh, it enjoyable. Was, the years passed. Oh yeah, that, that was uh, that was a quick two years. Then what came next? Uh, then I went uh, back to school. Michigan State How'd you have for a master's State? degree. One of the people that I had worked with at, uh, in St. Louis. Oh, at the uh, company that you were working for? The Longstreet summer? Abbott Company convinced me to, to go to Michigan State, uh, which I you know, turned out to be a, sure. a good thing to do and went from there to the University of California. Yeah, you're going out to Berkeley. Right. You went to see the other end, other end of the world. That's right, <laughs> and that was that's probably the major excuse for going there because I'd never been, never, never been out west. I like to so. tour, <laughs> and maybe work in school let's, on the let's side. Let's go, <laughs> and so that also worked out to be a very good decision. I had no. Did you no have any assistance out there? Or? Oh yeah. Oh okay. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I wasn't about. I couldn't couldn't afford to go anywhere without a, a, an assistantship. How long did you live? Did you stay out there until you finished? You finished in what sixty one, huh? Right. Yeah. So that would have been uh, started in, I guess, late fifty eight. Mm hmm. And went right straight through. And yes, and I left without having completed my thesis, so I still had to work on it. Uh, why did you have a job? Is that why you left? Or yeah, I, uh, oh, I went to, uh, that's when I went to, to Lieber Brothers in New York. Uh, the, the, my boss there was a person I had worked with in St. Louis the two years earlier, and uh, he was needed somebody then, and so I took off without having finished a thesis and managed to get it done. Get it done. Right. How'd you like that? So that, and then your career path, this would be before you came to Purdue. So Lieber Brothers, was that what you did before you came to Purdue? Right. Okay. Uh, uh, they have that big building in New York. Yes, the, the glass house. Right. 
Well, right. there, there are a lot of glass houses now. But, I know, uh, but in those but days, not, it at that many. time, that was that was a unique building. Right. Yeah. So I. Uh, what was the nature of the work that you were doing there? It was a buyer, buyer of fats and oils. Did you have to do any traveling? Some. Oh. But not. Not very much. How'd you like living? Did you live in New York while you were there? Well, we lived in New Jersey. Okay, uh, a little cheaper. And uh, and commuting. I gather you were married. By yes. Oh, where'd you meet your wife? At Michigan State. Oh, okay. So you she what is did she was she in school there? She was working in extension. Uh, in Flint, and that so okay. it was close enough. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Uh. uh how long did you work then for Lever Brothers? Lever Brothers, four years. Uh, and uh, <laughs> then, then made a bad decision and, and went to work for Armour and Company in Chicago. And in the, again, in the fats and oils business. And within, within a year, <laughs> the, the, that whole thing was, was closed out. So Armour. I was... I was, uh, and I took another job at Armour, and that only lasted for about six months before it was wiped out. They got a different vice president who didn't think that economic research was necessary, <laughs> and so oh, wiped that one out. <laughs> and that's when, <laughs> that's when I called Charles French at Purdue and said, hey, I need a job. <laughs> I don't want to be moving anymore, right? <laughs> Uh, well, now, who was? Did you know? Ha, was he at Purdue at that time? I had, uh, I had interviewed with uh, Dr. French. Oh, he uh, was on staff here. He was the department head oh, okay. in agricultural economics. Okay. And uh, so I had interviewed with him at a professional meeting a couple of years earlier, uh, before I. Uh, uh, yeah, I guess that was actually before I went back to St. Louis. Good grief. Uh, I guess so hard to, to keep my... Sure. my he had some con and had some previous contact with him. Right. And, uh, and, of course, it turned out that Purdue was, at that moment, desperate for some people in agricultural economics. And so I came down for a, for a, I guess I, I called the department head, I think it was either one week or two weeks till we had scheduled an interview. I came down, had the interview, left with a, with a job offer, uh, and called him back the next day and says, I'm coming. And I think the next week I came down and started work because I didn't have a job then. <laughs> this was this was kind of important. That's right. So that was. Uh, where did where did you where did you live when you came here? Now was Cranert Cranert was built at that time, so Aggie. Yes. Came? Oh, okay. Yeah, we so were good. already in the in the Cranert building. Yeah. It had just been occupied uh, the year before. Thing. I forget what year. See, I would have would have come in '66, and I think '65 was yeah. was when it was occupied. And uh, of course, you know, again, it's, uh, all kinds of things are, are accidents along the way. But even the Cranard Building, uh, they, they anyhow, there was some kind of key thing that that they needed a piece of the university, not just Cranard, but it, it helped something. So uh, at that time, Earl Butts was dean, and uh, he just sent agricultural economics over to, <laughs> to, <Cranard. laughs> to the Cranard <laughs> we have space. building. And, uh, That's how you got so, there. So we had, uh, so they were already in the Cranard building by the time I joined it, but it had, you know, just been a, sure, a, a year yeah. or less Something that they like had that. moved in. If they'd still been over in the Where in the old the annex on the on Ag Hall, or uh, 
Yeah, I think that's. I think I got the right name. Now, at least the building that the the ag building that's closest to to Craner, uh, and they were just packed in there, camping out. And so, Earl where Webster did you um, where did you live when you came? What was the housing like? Uh, we uh, we bought a house that was then at the north edge of West Lafayette on on Carrollton. Uh, what was beyond that? Farm uh, land? The Purdue farm, the hog farm. So we were, <laughs> we were next to the hog farm. Uh, and we spent, I guess we lived there in that house for four years. Uh -huh. And then moved down into Hills and Dales. Uh, were you still there? You know, and then we... The, we, we where, where did you live in? Where did you live in Hills and Dales? Uh, on Seven Eleven Carrollton, which was uh, there's a pretty good sized ranch house right at the bottom of the right in the valley. Okay. Uh, and uh, and that was a oh, delightful place to be for. And then we had kids in school, and everybody could walk to school. There was no. <laughs> No buses, <laughs> no buses, no taking people to school, no, no. and we were really close to the high school. Sure. So we stayed there until all the kids were through school. Because they could go to what, Birchfield School probably. Birchfield. All right. Yeah. Um, that would be close. And uh, and as I say, all the way through high school. Sure. Until uh, when the last one was done there. <laughs> Now we can think about <laughs> relocating. <laughs> then we, then we uh, right. moved out of there. Well, tell us a little about when when you started in your teaching responsibilities in Ag Econ, the size of the department and what you were doing oh, gosh. when you settled in. Uh, what would have been the... Uh, I can't really think of, of what, the, what the enrollment numbers That's were okay. at that stage. Uh, was the facilities in the Aggie Country Department about the same? Now they've changed it, I know, a little bit, but you had a couple floors. We had, uh, we had all of six, part of five, and part of seven in those days. Uh -huh. We got thrown out of seven later on. Uh -huh. uh, and, uh, and it was, you know, it was really a, really a nice place. You know, it was the best office space there was sure. on the campus. And the, the campus. newest building on campus. The camp. newest building on campus. <laughs> so that was, uh, that was really nice. Uh, and, uh, Can you tell us a little about your research that you were involved in? Uh, was primarily involved with prices uh, and price discovery uh, in agricultural markets. And uh, my, I didn't do very much teaching, but did teach a prices course mm -hmm. at a time or two during the way. But I was, uh, I was pretty afraid of students. So uh. <laughs> you did some also with agricultural cooperatives. Did you do some work with yes, them? Right. Yes. Yes. So the, the, my extension responsibilities were with the poultry and egg business and with agricultural cooperatives. Let me ask you this, how is the tie-in with extension? I'm thinking of the researchers because you're a faculty member at Ag Econ, but also with the extension service, is that how it works? Or? Yes, okay. so that, uh, we had, of course, missions in, in teaching research and extension okay. in the department. Okay. That's pretty much the way it is in, in agriculture. Sure, okay. Uh, okay. Almost uh, really all the departments have all three responsibilities. Sure, right, okay. Uh, and uh, again, it was. Uh, you did a lot of work with the in economics of the poultry and egg institute. Right, uh, and that, that was another uh, one of those things that uh, I just kind of stumbled into good deals. Uh, I mean, people, you know didn't really think that poultry was that good a place to be. But I came, I had to have a job. And I said, will you do poultry extension? Sure. <laughs> you know? 
<laughs> I need a job. Sign me up. <laughs> I had I had a little bit of experience with with poultry and armor, but not very much. But at least I knew uh, enough. But I didn't really know how uh, commercial the business was in Indiana. I mean, if you went across the the line into Illinois, you had little farm flocks, and and it was just a it was just kind of a, an addition to the farm business. But here in Indiana, you had serious uh, commercial poultry operations, both in southern Indiana and and north. The the, the duck business That's was. Uh, I wasn't uh, aware of that. Hmm. Oh, and it's just a world of difference between what went on in Illinois and what went on over here. And I was a, you know, knew a bit of that, but didn't appreciate how important it was that I was in a really commercial state. And this um, is before the Purdue P-E-R-D-U-E came here. Right. Uh, let's see, who owned the... Uh, was under different ownership down here. Uh, can't remember who. Was it an affiliate with? Was it tied in? I was. I, it was just a. It was really much, pretty much of a local operation okay. that Purdue Farms bought and then really expanded. And there was a there was a broiler operation in Southern Indiana, uh, and that was taken over by Purdue, so that all happened uh, uh, much later. Sure. Okay. Uh, so it was just just blind luck to, you know, said, well, you know, I'm looking for a job, and they say, will you do poultry? Mm, sure, <laughs> I'll do poultry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and, it, and it just was, you know, it worked so well for me. Super. Uh, That's nice. Because I, and there were so few people involved at the in agricultural economics in the poultry area that it didn't take much to get a national reputation. Uh, One of few. So just that's right. But if there's only five or six, it's not too hard to be known. <laughs> be well recognized, right? No, so it was just dumb luck. Yeah. The other thing you did was that outlook. Program. Yes. Uh, Want to just make a comment on that so the researchers know what that was? Uh, Did that the department that? had uh, was was one of the more active of the of the land grant departments in having a continuous uh, economic outlook program going. Uh, so we had once a year and. Uh, uh, in the fall, we'd have meetings all over the state, uh, and there would be a number of us in the department that would be involved with making preparation for those and delivering those meetings around the state. Uh, so it was a nice way to, to get to know the state, and uh, uh, people were always interested in what's going to happen in economics. So. And then, in addition to to having a fall program that we didn't get into every county, but I think we probably would have put on more than sixty meetings around the state within a week or a week and a half. We'd go through a complete preparation that involved almost everybody on the Ag Econ staff here on campus and put together, argue for two days about what the outlook was and then uh, uh, a number of us would go out and present those. Yeah. And I was usually not involved in teaching so I'd wind up doing the far south and Sure. Far north. <laughs> Did they at that time when you were in those? Remember the the, the uh, classes they used to have in the winter, the ag classes. Yeah. Which they don't have any longer. 
Wow. Winter, winter course. Winter right. course, right. right. That was still going when I came, because but it had wound down I quite remember a bit. them having been here for quite a while, and then it would, the climax would have been the uh, Ag Alumni Big uh, Fish Fry. That would have been at the end of the Right, that would be the, the end of that and I, Some people said that it, it was sort of beginning to wind down, but there didn't seem to be as much interest, and it was difficult for the people to come. So a number of factors, I think. But that would that had been running for quite a while. Oh, it, I it had been and a, ran, what, it had been a major a major program. But by the time I got here, it was already wound down sure. quite a bit from what it had. What it been. used to be, right? Because okay. you know those people who were who were really interested in that stuff probably would have been more of them coming to the university for a degree rather than just a short course being in a short course sure okay. uh, that outlook it was never did you do anything on the radio and WBA at all or was it more the presentations that you did at, at the very sites of the places in we did uh, we used to do one on the what was the network that we had uh, Oh, where they, you know every county had a, uh, a connection to. Well, I don't even remember what the thing was called. I don't either. But we would put on. Uh, was this on radio or TV? That TV. was a television, television broadcast. Okay. Okay. Uh, and we would put on an Outlook session for that. So we pretty well, pretty well covered the state. You know, there would probably be. Plenty of us going out. So That's within funny. two weeks, we'd hit every county that wanted a meeting. Did you also, uh, for the fish fry, did you participate in that? Because now they do have some classes and have some programs in the morning. Was there anything tied in with yeah, the fish fry? Yeah, that, that would have been, uh, there would always have been an, uh, a, some program. an out outlet program associated Prior to the, with that. To the uh, meal? Right. Okay. Right. That that morning there sure. would have been something going on. Right. And, uh, and I I don't know if they still do a. I it we don't do a we don't do an outlook session in that anymore. Uh -huh. uh, but uh, there's still a, a thing that goes on before the the fish fry. Before the fish fry. Did you, did you go to it? Did you go to it over the years? Oh yeah. It's changed a lot, hasn't it? Oh yeah. <laughs> it's, it's quite a different deal than it was. Yeah. <laughs> I've heard. I'm often sorry I didn't go in those early days. Well, of, yeah, of course, you know it was the it was the staff that had to to do everything at those. Now, you know, you you got staff that are still serving on sure. tables, but and I don't know. I don't think we even clean up anymore. We used to do the entertainment too. <laughs> well, that's right. <laughs> Maury would handle that. <laughs> there was always a oh. they call it the fish fry forecast uh, that, uh, that would include economic outlook as sure. well as, uh, of course, Maury was into nonsense uh, to a <laughs> significant degree. <laughs> His creativity. <laughs> oh. So it was uh, it was a big deal. And People, people did come in and have a good time over here in the armory. All right. Oh yeah. All right. It wasn't uh, it wasn't ideal conditions, but <laughs> but people liked it over there. Oh sure. Uh, let's talk a little about when you were associate head and uh, from eighty nine to ninety five. How'd that come about? And talk a little bit about that. Uh. And also extension coordinator was that part of what was right. Uh, that, okay. was, that was that uh, was what. We had at that time usually were were three assistant or associate heads uh, for the department. For the department, one for teaching, one for extension, and uh, one for research, just covering the same sure. three areas. Uh, and uh, that was oh, let's see what was going on. Um, Trying to get my my yeah. timeline there, uh, uh, I would have been uh, I don't know if I put a note in here on that or not. No, I 
think so. About, 80, about 89, I think, is when you go 89 to 95, when you were the associate head. Right, it was when, uh, it must have been when Charles French left. No? Because Paul Ferris was head after that. When Wallace Tyner came in as, as head of the department is when I went when to, the, to the front office. And uh, I had whatever, I three, have three or four years, that was enough of that. Uh, <laughs> don't find somebody else. <laughs> what, uh, what can you tell what your, response, what your responsibilities were in that, in the office? Uh, primarily extension uh, and research programs, just coordinating Correct. those activities across the department. Uh, and so it was, it was just making sure that <laughs> that somebody was doing what, what they were supposed to be, to be done. Doing. Okay. <laughs> Was it, were you on the, did you serve on the University Library Committee or not? I uh, think I did. Uh, I was going to ask you because I think when we had that serials cancellation, that's where you and Emily worked, or Emily was the dean. Right. And uh, that was one of the, the first ones that we did, and that was a big one. Yes. Yeah. 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 I so I spent quite a few years on the, on on the, the committee, line. I guess. Okay. I, I don't remember just what it was, uh, but had a... Again, in, in enjoyed that experience of sure. uh, being uh, involved in right. in a variety of things. Did uh, you ever? The, John Hawkins was the librarian while you were here. Yes. All right. Okay. And then Gordon Law came after John retired and stepped out. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Uh, and you know that the archives, the special collections, is now part of the our archives. The Crandall Collection. Okay. Yeah, it's been merged, and also the Goss Collection, which was an engineering, so it's brought it all together, hmm. which is really yeah. nice. Yeah. Uh, visiting professorships. Make a comment on that. You did several of those. That was uh, say fine. <laughs> you got went to Harvard. Uh, I Germany. Well, pretty good. <laughs> uh, the uh, Harvard came about because of, of having worked with the uh, with the agricultural cooperative service and uh, they put up some of the money to to finance me being at, at Harvard for the for a whole year for yeah I think we spent a year there. I of course 72 to 73 is what I see the yeah. work that I did. did what would, did uh, you do some teaching up there, or was it for no, research? No, oh. just just uh, just research, and uh, uh, I worked on a book while there. So there was a, a small book that came was out published out of, right. of that. Were your family able to go with you? Yeah. Oh yes. Oh, that was nice. Yeah. How'd you like uh, living in Cambridge? We lived in. Good grief. Boy, you're taxing my memory. Well, you live uh, near near there, though. Yeah. Near Boston. Any, somewhere in near Boston. West. Uh, okay. Uh, 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 oh, it's a good sounding name. Uh, what's the, the, there's a private school. Amherst? No. no. That's Mass, Mass, no. That's okay. Um, but you live near there. You right. could take the MT That's MTA into Boston. I drove. I drove in. Uh, oh, okay. But you could take the yeah. MTA too. Yeah. yeah Go down to the Cape. It, it didn't. It just didn't. Uh, we were. We were in the in the uh, uh, western suburb. Uh, That's ridiculous. I should be able to remember. You can insert it. Because uh, it's a fancy name of, of, uh, of a town. 
Uh, there are a lot of environs that I'm not that familiar <laughs> with, so that's okay. <laughs> having, having been there only just a short period of time. Yeah, what about the Germany thing? How did that come about? The University of Kiel in Germany? I guess uh, we had a visiting professor here at Purdue. Uh -huh. From uh, a university? From, uh, from Kiel. And uh, our, you know, it was through that connection that I wound up spending, it must have been a, must have been a full uh, uh, academic year at, uh, at Kiel, uh, which, <laughs> I, you know, it was, a, it, it, was, it was something that I wanted to do, wound up doing some some research there as well as it, going to class wasn't too good because I didn't know German and but there were there were quite a few classes that were in English anyway everybody spoke English I mean you could you could just walk down the street in, in Kiel and, and talk to somebody in English uh, sure why it'd be any other language <laughs> I'd be wiped out right <laughs> would have been in real yeah, trouble yeah. so I didn't know enough uh, I didn't know enough German to I mean I could get around you know I could, but it, yeah it was a little easier the, oh yeah and, yeah and you could you know if, if this guy didn't speak English the one standing next to him would <laughs> so, interpret <for it. laughs> so, I you. so you could yeah. always uh, could always get around with English right you uh, were um, also a visiting scholar in um, for the Agriculture Cooperative Service. Right. Uh, what, in what, Washington. I mean, oh, it's Washington, D.C. What right. What did that entail? Let's see, what was the major project that we were involved in? Oh, yeah, it was, uh, that, that was where basically there's a, there's a book there somewhere. Oh, you did, you published uh, a book as a result of that? Yeah. Uh-huh. That go? Uh, federal income taxes and farmer cooperatives. So, uh, income taxes were uh, were a controversial item in dealing with cooperatives because the other businesses claimed that co-ops didn't pay taxes, and what it you know it, but. Cooperatives don't really make any money. It's all allocated to the to, to the members. patrons, to the members, who pay the income tax. Uh, so it was they they wanted somebody to uh, clear it up, to kind of enlighten, uh, not, not really not really defend, but enlighten. That's a good word. Yes, we don't. <laughs> I hear you. Um, let me ask you this: You did some uh, international assignments. Purdue had a, a um, something down in South America in Brazil. Minas Grasses was in Viscosa. Was that uh, Minas Gerais? Minas Gerais, right? I and and Viscosa. Did you go down there? <laughs> uh, just on a short-term okay. assignment. I didn't. Uh, I, I, I didn't. To, do I try to pick up as much information because it doesn't it doesn't exist anymore. The university is there, but I remember hearing about it, of people that had gone there. Yeah, nobody in the yeah. early days and really really expanded. Right, so. and and really had quite a bit to do with building uh, an agriculture program at that, uh, at that university. Right. Well, did you spend just several months down there, or is that what it was, or just a short term? Probably, probably about six weeks or so. Oh, okay. They had people think, coming and going. Yeah. I think I was only there once. Uh, but th when you went, the university was probably up and running. And oh yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but then there were there was always a full time uh, Purdue person in the in the department there, uh, and I guess usually there would have been two or, or three people from Purdue. But there was always somebody from agricultural economics, and then they, the, they'd have a chief of party uh, who, at the time I was there, was an agronomist. And then there was somebody else there at that same time that I don't remember. Mary Louise Foster, who was in consumer science and retail and has been retired for a long time, she went down there for some period of time. Okay. And uh, she, she lives over in, in uh, the varsity. 
this that place was just so far from anything. I mean, you mean it, this, uh, the uh, university where you were? Yeah, in? yeah. I mean, we'd, it it would be from from Rio. At that time, it was more than an eight-hour drive. And, and the roads were and the roads not were, were not good. No, no. The pavement ran out before you got to uh, before you got to to. Uh, so you Sosa. picked up your car. <laughs> <laughs> and carried it in. I, in the rainy season, uh, <laughs> it was uh, it was it was doubtful. The, now the project had four wheel drive vehicle that they could get out, but there were times when even it would have trouble Come getting on. out of there. Uh, <laughs> that was uh, they 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 talked about. You know, this was right at the end of the war. Uh, World War Earl, II, right? Oh. And, and Earl Butts was uh, was he wasn't Secretary of Agriculture at that point, but he was he was in the uh, Department of Agriculture, and uh, they were you know just kind of allocating who was going to go where in these in these support functions, and I guess it was Earl that, that picked Vesosa. Uh, for Purdue, and uh, it was, you know, it's really off the beaten track. <laughs> Ohio State was at uh, in the state of Sao Paulo, which was a lot better off than uh, than poor old Wisosa. But Purdue really had a good program there, and they sent. Sent good people, uh, so uh, they made quite a they made quite a significant right. impact. The, did you have to speak what, the language? Is Portuguese? Yeah. Well, the people who were there on permanent or who were on a long term assignment would. I didn't know word one in Portuguese. So. I understand it's not an easy language to learn either. <clears throat> you can pick up a few words though. Uh, so my. Time in Brazil was uh, was actually visiting the the Department of Agriculture in uh, in both Minister Ias and in uh, in uh, São Paulo. Uh, so my activities were not involved in teaching there at all, and that was only for about six weeks or yeah. consulting or with them is what right. you were doing down there. Right. Working with them. Had a great time. I bet. Yeah. Did you get to Rio too? Well you landed oh, yeah. there. Yeah, <laughs> that's the only way in. <laughs> <laughs> well, unless you went into to uh, uh, Sao Paulo in the in the south. Uh, yeah, it was uh, it was a great experience. It sounds it like, yeah. Wouldn't wanna You also went to Africa at one time, did you? Yeah. Where uh, else did that take you? Johannesburg? Uh, well, I was in in uh, in Egypt uh, and ooh, good grief! I can't can't even give you a country name now. Uh, in in North Africa and then also uh, in in the South. Uh, I think, yeah, I was in South Africa at one time. Okay. Uh, of course, some of those names have changed over time too. It's hard to, you know. Right. Yeah. The the what was Burkina Faso? Maybe that's what it. it no, that's not what it is. I don't know. Uh, it, it. I've seen old country, maps, and those names just not. That, they're they're not into the country has jargon. changed a couple right. of times. Right. Yeah. And I spent some time in Egypt. Uh-huh. Uh huh. On oh, they were. Must have been in, in in Africa three times. I was usually ready to go when uh, when somebody when the opportunity was there. Said, "Let's go." <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> oh, was this in, in Johannesburg in South Africa when they had apartheid? So yes. different. Okay. Okay. It's changed a lot in many ways. 
they say Johannesburg is was a, was a lovely city. Oh well, it was. Uh, it, I it mean, was the Brit you know, the British had it for a long time. The Dutch and the British. You know. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was quite a nice place. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now you did. <laughs> there was there was a big difference between being on the white side and the oh, sure. and the black side. Sure. Uh, but overall, in the main the main metropolitan area. Yeah. Yeah, it is yeah. a nice place. Let's just talk a couple things about. Uh, Department of Agriculture uh, Economics. You got they got an award in '93, the uh, by the American Agricultural Economics Association. I picked up on that. In 1993, they got an award from the association. That's very nice. The, uh, let's see, what was it about? Well, I'd be in here. No, oh, well, it, I. The department is the one that got it, which is nice. Yeah, uh, that was uh, the Distinguished Extension Program mm -hmm. in '93. Right, but that's nice. Um, that was one of the first times they actually recognized a, a department. Now we, uh, other than that, uh, I. Got a, a shared a, a I was going to ask research about some of your award. You got uh, the American Farm Economics Association and the Western Farm Economics Association, right. and then the uh, Indiana State Poultry Golden Egg Award. Did yeah. they give you a golden egg? <laughs> All gold? Was it 24 carats? <laughs> no. Or 14? I'm afraid, I'm afraid, I'm afraid not. <laughs> The goose that laid the golden egg, right? <laughs> there, there must there must be an egg around the house somewhere, <laughs> but it was it wasn't gold. Hope nobody ate it. <laughs> it wasn't gold. And then you got the uh, American Agriculture Economic Association Distinguished Policy Con Contribution Award. Yes. And then that uh, ninety three was the other the American the Distinguished Extension Program as the group you got that. Right. Oh, that's uh, nice. Uh, and it, I had yeah I I don't know if you got a there was a Western. Uh, the Western Farm Economics Association okay. in 1964. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> um, well, actually, there were there the, that particular piece of research that was my PhD thesis with uh, Gordon King was the major professor, mm -hmm. uh, and that won both the Western Farm Economics Association and the American. Farm Economics, nice. which is now American Agricultural Economics. Oh, so okay. Nice. Okay. All right. But that's nice that uh, what, when you got the Golden Egg Award, were you surprised? Yes. Good. Yes. I always <laughs> ask people that. I said, well, yeah, sort of. <laughs> one time, I, one person I asked and said, well, I was invited to go to this meeting. And I was going to the association, so I went and uh, it was a lady, and I'm looking around, and I see people that normally don't go to this meeting. <laughs> and I said, they, she said, I think something may be in the offing, and they were there to give this award. <laughs> um, what about any uh, hobbies, special interests do you um, share with us? And then your retirement activities. Tell us what you've been doing to stay in trouble. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I guess uh, uh, stuff to do with agriculture has always been um, has, has always been at the center of things. Uh, we own land uh, in Indiana. Uh, well, I have three tractors, uh, <laughs> so <laughs> I don't do any <laughs> I don't do any farming, but I have three tractors. Oh, that's nice. So we could come over and have a party sometime on the tractor <laughs> after the after the football game. <laughs> Do you keep them at home? No, they're oh. on the farm. Oh, okay. Where's your farm located? Well, one is uh, is here at. Uh, good grief! Yeah, keep asking me questions, and my it's mind perfect. doesn't doesn't work it's anymore. It's not cooking. It'll come back later. That's okay. <laughs> uh, Colburn. Okay. And at Colfax. Well, they used to have the fish. <laughs> right. That's. <laughs> uh, and then I still have the. Farm in Southern Illinois. Oh, you still have a family farm. Yeah. So somebody takes care of these farms for you. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're all, they're all rented. Yeah, I was, uh, in fact, was just playing around with, uh, with, looking at 
some farms that are going to be up for auction within this next week. If I had one more farm, I could get to a thousand acres. What do you raise on your farm? Do you do uh, products or animals or? Uh, it'd be all crops, uh, mainly yeah. mainly corn and soybeans. Okay. <clears throat> and that's why you need the tractors. You know? <laughs> yeah, except I don't do any of that. <laughs> I mow the roadsides and. Uh, I delegate those things. Try <laughs> try to to keep things cleaned up. Tenants are, are not too excited about mowing weeds, so that provides me entertainment. That's good. And what else have you been doing in your retirement besides keeping crop the property? How's the family farm doing? Pretty well? Do you have somebody on there that takes care of it? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's all. It's rented. And That's good. Yeah, are you doing what, corn and soybeans? Or it's what? there. There's also wheat. Okay. In southern Illinois. Well, that's nice that you still have the family farm. Yeah, that, uh, <laughs> again, it, it kind of goes back to the, to the story. My, of course, my parents were farming and my grandparents were sure. farmers. Uh, but uh, my mother had inherited some money, and so it became possible for my parents to think about buying a farm, otherwise they'd always been renters. And of course, I, you know, it was kind of made conditional, you know, are you going to stay home and farm? Uh, in or which case we buy a farm, otherwise we won't buy. Well, of course it turned out, you know, then war came and all this other stuff, so I never went back to the farm. But they were pretty happy that they'd bought the farm anyway. Sure, sure. Oh, yeah. And they had they and, had stake. And they uh, and they lived there on that farm. You know, it was the land was rented out to somebody else after my dad quit farming. Uh, but we still uh, we st I still have the farm that was the only one that my father ever owned. That's nice. That's very nice. So we'll, Good. we Just don't ever sell anything. We Good. just we we buy more. We buy, <laughs> right? <laughs> if we um, get money, we buy. <laughs> um, do you have a, a, a favorite Purdue tradition uh, that you'd like to share with us? And I'm going to ask you for an outstanding event. If it doesn't have to necessarily, it's pretty open on that. I, uh, I guess I didn't think of anything. That, okay, what about uh, an outstanding event? Do you have something that comes to mind? <laughs> the fish fry. There you go. Okay, well, that's a, tradi that's a tradition, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's quite a, quite a tradition. It sure is. Um, right. Uh, of course, especially when it was over in the armory and, uh, and Maury Williamson was the... The MC. The, the head guy. The imprim that was... Uh, Imprimatur, right. Was different, so... So it was, it was always fun. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm going to let, if there's something that I did not ask or anything closing, something else that you'd like to share with us, comes to mind? Okay. I did ask you off camera, you said you have done some traveling in your retirement too. Yeah, I, okay. you know, some of the, the international Consulting was actually after I retired. Oh, good. That's right. Uh, so, uh, and 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 that was, you know, something I really enjoyed doing. Getting to Egypt was, uh, and and it's so much better to to go somewhere and have something to do rather than I'm not a very good tourist, uh, but if you if you're talking, you know, you have a reason to be. Dealing there. with local people that's just altogether different than being a tourist. Right, exactly. It's a whole different perspective. And you know, I, uh, the the whole the whole Purdue experience was uh, was like one big vacation. That's I nice. just. <laughs> Did you ever go do uh, go to any of the athletics, football or basketball while you were here? Not a. Just watching on TV, huh? No, don't even do that. <laughs> My wife, 
<laughs> likes to do that, and and I just uh, uh, sports have never held a, a much of an interest for me. I think it was because <laughs> because back at the University of Illinois, uh, the football players getting paid, or the, not even the players, just the people who went out for football. Uh, to get beaten up, got paid for this this activity, and I suppose I I, uh, I must have probably resented that somewhere <laughs> along the way. Uh, so never never got into never it. Never got into uh, it, right? Never got into it. Yeah. Uh, Any, anything in anything else that I missed that uh, look at your notes? You think? Uh, what would I want to tell you? Let's see, what did we have? Got it pretty well covered, I think. Just kind of looking down at the. Well, it is just that Purdue was a uh, was a grand experience for me from beginning to end. It still is. It still is. It's good. It's still going, like uh, the Energizer battery. Uh, it just, it just really was uh, was pretty lucky, you know. I, to lose a job and uh, and to be able to come down here uh, was uh, that's where I should have been. Yeah. And you finally got here. <laughs> finally and got I never here. left, right? That's right. All right, good. Thank you, Dr. Schrader. I appreciate that very much.